Hi everybody, it is February 20, 2018. I just want to show you something here on IntelliCast. Okay, so now we have this uh, man-made weather that you can see right here. But here in South Carolina, you don't see anything on the radar. So you would think that we would have no precipitation which we don't here today, but look at the satellite. Now this is a little bit of cloud substance, faint cloud substance that suddenly erupts, but it stops. Very defined line right there, Greenville. I live in Anderson, south of Greenville, right there, and this is what Anderson, South Carolina looks like. But you don't see this cloud covering on the satellite. This is exactly what you do see. Bright white cloud substance, horizon to horizon. You don't see the sunny day or the clear day that IntelliCast shows you. But I want to bring your attention to this. The wild, weird weather on the way, record cold west, record warm east, flooding in the center. Brought to you by USA Today. I'm going to play this video. Listen to this. The eastern part of the U.S. has been seeing spring-like temperatures this February, and that's because the polar vortex has split. I know that sounds scary, but here's what that actually means. Mashable says that, first of all, it's a temporary separation, so things should go back to normal eventually. But in the meantime, the split in the vortex means that Western Europe and a good portion of Eurasia will see colder, stormier conditions in February and March. The eastern portion of the United States, on the other hand, is seeing temperatures 20 to 25 degrees above average. Washington, D.C. and New York could even see temperatures as high as the 70s in February, with the western U.S. getting colder than average conditions and could see heavy snowfall and ideal snowmaking conditions over the next two weeks. However, this is a problem for snow lovers on the east coast, as the further into March we go, the less likely widespread snowstorms become. That said, it is possible that a snowstorm brings the first decent snow to the northeast in over a month this weekend before warming up again. All right, so uh, um, the polar vortex split sounds scary, but don't worry. It should go back to normal. It should go back to normal. I wonder sometimes if man, who is now creating our weather, loses control sometimes and nature fights back. Who knows? This is the world that we're living in. All we can do is speculate. When it is artificially produced, our world, then we're left to just speculate. But wild, weird weather is coming to the United States. It's coming. We have had it for many, many years. And have you been experiencing these extreme drops in temperature, extreme increases in temperature. We have had here in South Carolina it going from 40s to near 80s, back to 40s. That in itself is not good. These extreme temperature changes, is that can affect our immune system. But just to go through it this quickly, so 18 inches of snow is possible in the central Rockies, as well as the Appalachians. Uh, winter storm warnings for Wyoming, Utah, Colorado, Arizona, New Mexico, and for parts of the plains from western South Dakota to northwestern Nebraska. Dangerous winter weather conditions, including blowing snow and high winds. I think those states are used to blowing snow and high winds. Uh, have you noticed that we have an awful lot of drama queens in our country? Now, what they're reporting here seems to be normal winter conditions for these states. But the flooding, the flooding here, they say that thunderstorms will stay put for a week or 10 days in central United States. That really does concern me because they want to flood out people in central United States 
destroy them, and get rid of them to bring them into the mega regions. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, then please go to this site, America 2050, and do some research on Agenda 2030 and the reshaping, not just of the United States of the world, but I'm talking about the United States, the reshaping of the United States to force people out of the gray areas and bring them into the mega regions. And one way they do this is the weather. The weather. They bring thunderstorms, storms that will have little movement and or track over the same area for perhaps a week, 10 days, major flooding threat. And this is a lot of the gray area in which they want to move people into mega regions. I also want to show you two articles that were that was sent to me by a subscriber who I want to thank for sending them to me. Viruses, lots of them are falling from the sky. Viruses, lots of them are falling from the sky. Yes, an astonishing number of viruses are circulating around the Earth's atmosphere and falling from it, according to new research from scientists in Canada, Spain, and the United States. The study marks the first time scientists have quantified the viruses being swept up from the Earth's surface into the free troposphere, the layer of atmosphere beyond Earth's weather systems, but below the stratosphere where jet airplanes fly. They're dropping viruses, bacteria, fungi, right upon us. Every day, more than 800 million viruses are deposited per square meter above the planetary boundary layer. That's 25 viruses for each person in Canada. <laughs> and so many are sick today. And they're claiming that these viruses are being picked up and then they're traveling in the atmospheric boundary layer Oh, from Africa to the United States. Can't these researchers see all of the spraying that is taking place? I guess not. Bacteria and viruses are typically deposited back to Earth via rain events and Saharan dust intrusions. This is why so many people are sick. The researchers also found the majority of the viruses carried signatures indicating they had been swept up into the air from sea spray. The viruses tend to hitch rides on smaller, lighter organic particles suspended in air and gas, meaning they can stay aloft in the atmosphere longer. Funny that they're just discovering this when we do have so much spraying taking place. Just wanted to point to the explosive article, the Pentagon bioweapons. Well, we know that the U.S. Army regularly produces deadly viruses, bacteria, and toxins in direct violation of the U.N. Convention on the Prohibition of Biological Weapons. Hundreds of thousands of unwitting people are systematically exposed to dangerous pathogens and other incurable diseases. These diseases manufactured by our great US military, bio warfare scientists using diplomatic cover test man-made viruses at Pentagon bio laboratories in 25 countries across the world these U.S. bio laboratories are funded by the Defense Threat Reduction Agency at about $2.1 billion a year. It's the Cooperative Biological Engagement Program and are located in former Soviet Union countries such as Georgia and 
Ukraine, the Middle East, Southeast Asia, and Africa. And here are our fabulous bioweapon labs across the world. An awful lot in Africa. So think about all of those deadly uh, viruses that break out in Africa. They're being unleashed in Africa. And then we're told that they are carried across to other countries, carried across thousands of miles across the ocean to the United States. They are dumping these viruses upon us. Um, you can't, you cannot convince me that all of this is just natural. Here's a bio lab in the Republic of Georgia. We've got them in the Ukraine. We have an out of control military. And they are killing so many people. 